Hey guys, so by now most of you probably know that I have been making videos for HGTV over on the HGTV Handmade channel. But unrelated to that, I am kind of obsessed with HGTV magazine. And every month they have this feature called How Bad Is It? where they tell you how bad it is to do things like store paper bags under the sink or never feed your houseplants. And so I thought I could shamelessly steal this idea for a video, except to make it all about graphic design. So question number one, how bad is it to download a font illegally? You can get pretty much anything illegally on the internet these days, including probably any font you could possibly want. If you're only using the font for personal use, as in you're not making any money off of it, and you're not distributing it to a wide audience, I say go for it, use whatever you want. But as soon as you start making any money off of your designs, or distributing them to a wide audience, you really need to get your fonts legally, which means yes, paying money for them. Type designers are so talented and spend a crazy amount of time designing their fonts, so save up your money and respect your fellow designers. Verdict? Really bad. Question 2. How bad is it to use serif and sans serif fonts on the same page? It's totally fine. I don't know where this myth started, but you can absolutely mix serif and sans serif fonts. The thing you want to avoid is using two fonts that look too similar to each other, for example using Bodoni and Dido in the same document. That just looks kind of messy and unprofessional, but using one serif and one sans serif, you are totally fine. Question 3. How bad is it to print from an RGB file. I was actually curious about this one myself, so I did a test where I printed the same colors from an RGB file and from a CMYK file on my home printer, which is an Epson Photo 1400 on Epson Premium Presentation Paper Matte, and it turns out the RGB color is actually printed a little bit brighter, which is not what I was expecting. I think it might be because my printer has six ink cartridges instead of four, so the CMYK doesn't cover the entire range that my printer can actually print, but that might be totally wrong, I don't know. If anybody out there knows more about inkjet printers than I do, please let me know what's going on. So if it's something that you are just printing at home, do your own color test, see what, what if your printer is doing the same thing as mine. Don't stress yourself out about which file format it is. However, if you're working with an outside print company, I'm sure they're going to have a lot more specifications that you have to follow exactly. Colors can definitely get messed up with big, expensive, fancy printers if you don't convert. So if you're ever working with an outside printer, always convert to CMYK. Verdict? sometimes really bad. And finally, question number four, how bad is it to not have a degree in graphic design? I've been getting this question a lot lately from people who want to get into graphic design but don't have the money or the time to go to school for it. And the answer is, it depends on the person. Some people have a ton of natural talent and are really driven to practice on their own outside of a school environment. So for those people, not getting a degree is fine. When you're applying for jobs or even trying to get freelance work, nobody really cares what school you went to as long as you can present quality work. School does offer a rigorous curriculum where you're kept on track and have regular critiques and you'll make contacts that are going to be invaluable later on when you're searching for jobs. But but if school or even night classes really aren't an option for you, at least try to get an internship at a design studio where you're working alongside established designers. And I promise you'll learn way more actually being in that environment than you would just staring at your computer screen all day every day. Verdict? It depends. So those were a couple graphic design dilemmas I thought I would try to clear up. As always, let me know in the comments if I got anything totally wrong. So if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up so I know to make more. And if you have any graphic design questions, feel free to leave them down below and maybe I'll answer them in a future episode. I'm also thinking of doing a DIY crafting version, so if you have any questions on that topic, you can leave those down below as well. Real quick before I go, I want to remind you guys that the Buying Books shirt is back in stock on DFTBA. I know a lot of you guys wanted to buy it before it was out of stock for a little while. And yes, it is only unisex, but the fabric is much nicer than it used to be, so I promise that you will look fine in it. Like, super fine. Like, really hot. And if you're going to Playlist Live this weekend, please come find me and say hi and come to my panels and things. I'll be tweeting about it so you guys know where I'm going to be. So if you missed my last video, 
it was all about how to design YouTube merchandise. You can watch that right here. Or if you're missing my DIY videos, obviously you're not watching HGTV Handmade. Because I just put up a video over there about these DIY springtime sunglasses. You can watch that right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next time. to start mowing the lawn seriously like really like I have three lines left to say <laughs>